This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and today we're going to use shape layers to create a flag using this wonderful Venetian blinds break apart type thing. We're going to use a lot of keyframes, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's open up After Effects and get into it. The first thing to do in After Effects is create a new composition. We're going to go with the HDTV 1080 24 frames a second preset, duration 30 seconds. First thing I'm going to do is make a new shape layer. Now we're going to add to this shape layer a fill. Great. And we're also going to add to this shape layer a rectangle. And that rectangle is going to be, I'm going to go with, say, 500 by 100. Now, if this is 500 by 100, if I create five of them and stack them on top of each other, then I will create a stack of five. So let's just do that now. So I'm going to just duplicate that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five of them. Put the fill below all of those so that it's actually filling them. That would be cool. Now, I need to also space them out to fill up a square. So that means that I'm going to have to adjust them up and down a certain amount. So perhaps minus 100 from this guy. And uh, what else am I going to need? Perhaps uh, minus 200 from this guy. Good. All right, the next one we have here is going to be 100. So going down. And then the next one. 200 going down. So we have this square, or it appears to be a square. It's actually made up of many rectangles. So what I'd like to do is now organize them from top to bottom. Uh, we've got the one at the very top, good, and then the next one, and then the middle one, and the one under that, and so on. So first thing we need to do is bring on the square. And we're going to do that using the rotation and the scale. The so rotation I'm going to start at zero. That's good. The scale I'm going to start at zero. Okay. Now, I'm going to move ahead a couple frames. We're here at frame 20 now. And the scale is going to return to 100%. And the rotation is going to move to 45. And that shifts everything inside that layer 45 degrees. Take all these keyframes. And then I'm going to easy ease them. And then I'm going to pull the front handle forward. And then the back handle uh, towards the front handle. So that comes on like that, which is okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead here to frame 10. I'm going to set a couple keyframes there. And then I'm going to drag those keyframes to be back at the beginning. So it pops on rather than slides on, which I like just for visual interest. So it's popped on. Next thing we want to do is turn these from being just flat, regular square into being a stack of smaller rectangles. And we do that by manipulating the contents, and we manipulate the contents and the rectangle paths, the size and the position of each of these. So go ahead and set keyframes for all of those, for the initial start state of their change. And you can just hit U to only see what you're changing. Now we're gonna go ahead, maybe 20 frames again. And I'm doing that by hitting Shift and Page Up. And by size, they're all gonna to change to be 50 now. So now it's 500 by 50 for each of them. And I'm just tabbing in between each of those things. So what's changing? They're all getting thinner. That's good, but we'd like them all to change, get thinner only towards one side. So what we'll do is we will now alter these, as this shape is being reduced by 50 units, you want to adjust its position by 25 units just so that it matches up. I know it seems like logically it should be the other way around, but remember the anchor point for each of those is in the center. So let's just do that for all of them now. So this one here needs to go one, two, one, two, three, five. And I'm just nudging the values in there. So two, one, two, three, four, five. Next one, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. And the next one, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So what does that look like? It looks kind of like that. So that's pretty good. We should take all those and we're going to easy ease them as well. Okay, like that. And just like we did, we push this initial handle forward and then we pull this other handle back. Okay, pretty good. Just like that. Now, happens a little bit slow for my taste. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull these in and I'd also like to offset them. So I'd like one to happen, and then the other, and the other, and the other, and the other. Um, so what I'll do for that is I'll take these, and I'll just drag them, since they're matched pairs, uh, just drag them in pairs, a little bit like so. So each one is starting at a different time, and it has a cascading effect. That's, that's great, so far so good. Um, 
In our example, though, there were white tiles as well, or red tiles, or whatever the reverse of the color is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control shift D, which is going to create a split. And then I'm just going to extend the original all the way to the end, because we would like that to be true. At this point of the division, I would like for shape two here to be parented to shape one. And I would also like to remove any of its crazy scaling and rotation notions, just so it's always stuck to the scale and rotation of the initial shape. And then I'm going to take the fill here and I'm going to make it a totally different color. Okay, so when this happens, all of these things now need to be at a position so that we can see them, which means adjusting them by 50 in the opposite direction. So they fill in all of these gaps. Which is a pretty simple process. It doesn't seem to be taking us too long to do. See how that looks. Looks pretty normal, you know? Looks, looks pretty much as I expected it. Good. Now, we don't actually need these keyframes here since the white shape is not actually seen, but what's important is that they be the correct shape and position for when we separate these apart. So, we can do away with those initial keyframes if you so desire, you know, just if you want to. I mean, don't feel you have to. I wouldn't if I were you. I would not feel obligated in the slightest. So, we won't do that. And let's just rename these so they make sense to us. Let's call this one uh, white shapes and we'll call this one red shapes. The next thing that we want these things to do is we want this to begin rotating. So I'm going to set a keyframe to start some rotation. Now we're going to move ahead several keyframes, just a bunch of them, and we are going to begin to rotate it around to be here. So it's going to be at 180 degrees from where it started. And we'd like to make this a little bit more extreme so that it really kicks up and that one could anticipate, you know, it's going fast enough to cause these layers to fly apart. Because that's what we'd like. We'd like to, at some point, have them both separated out. And that means taking their position here and moving them apart. And we'll be moving them at least 250 apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that 250 and I'm just going to go through and paste it into all of these zeros here. So that creates all those bars on that side. Now with these, we're going in the opposite direction. We're going negative 250. So just go through all those position values, negative 250 for each of them. Perfect. That's great. So now we've got that coming apart. And let me just take the transparency grid off so we can maybe see it a bit better. Good. So that seems to be lining up. And we'll just have all the motion end at that point. Perfect. Now it's time to bring it all back together. And some of them will be coming back more than others. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, the ones towards the bottom are going to extend for the full width. That means their size is going to have to change. In fact, I think everybody's size is going to have to change at some point. So just go ahead and set new keyframes for all of that. Do, 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 do. And apparently After Effects uses up a lot of disk. I didn't know that. So we've got this going on. I'm going to move ahead. 20 more keyframes, and let's mesh these things back together. Actually, maybe 10 keyframes is enough for that. We're gonna go ahead 10 frames and mesh all of this back together. So, since we've flipped it upside down, all of the ones that are at the new bottom are here, and so they're going to be 950 and located at zero. So that's good, and let's see the next red bar it would like to be also 950 located at zero, okay? So we have one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do the next one as well. So we'll get the position of zero, nine fifty. There you go. Perfect. That looks that looks nice and good. Now let's touch up these here as well. So we'll go nine fifty on this, zero, nine fifty, zero. Those all seem to be in the correct spots. That should do well. Now with these other ones, let's set those to be six fifty. And their position a little bit harder to determine, but we do know that we want it to be lined up with the edge of the 950s. So where does that put us? We can just zoom in and find out using a ruler. But it looks like we're spot on, so that's good. So the next one, 650, same, minus 150, no, not minus 15, minus 150, good. 
Perfect. And all of these will require the same. So that was uh, 650 minus 150. And the other one, 650 minus 150. Good. And we are missing somebody. Here we go. 650 minus 150. So we've created this, and certainly the proportions to real American flags are way off, but you'll have to excuse me because I am definitely Canadian. So select all those, and uh, we just want to make sure that they all have a similar shape to them that all of these, you know, these shapes in here all make sense. And at this point, I can't say that they do. Let's see, yeah, this looks accurate now. Okay, so how does that come together? Good, we've got these things coming together. Now we also need the blue part to happen. And the blue part is just gonna be a large new rectangle. So we're just gonna go here, create a new rectangle um, it can begin its life there, and then we go into the rectangle rectangle path. And the size of this thing is going to be 950 wide by 500, or at least its end state will be. When it begins its life, it won't. But anyway, we're just going to hit U, find out where we are ending this thing. Ends there, so put in a keyframe for its size there. And it starts at a width of 0, and we'll give it a color here in the, in the dark blues area something that fits with our current scheme so let me grab these keyframes here we make sure that their curve matches the curve of everything else that we've been doing so far so when we play that through it expands and there we go so that is pretty much it um, that is everything you need to create a wonderful square that breaks into parts and then those parts form back together some things that you might want to consider are things like staggering keyframes, such as we did in the beginning, then you can also do in the end. I think it had a nice uh, sawtooth look to it, so you might want to give that a try. So I'm just offsetting them just like we did in the beginning, so those all come together quite nicely. Except, you know, it doesn't really work as well just because of the blue part coming in, so that might not be an option you want to consider. Uh, some final touches for it though. Take all of these things and pre-compose them. Name it whatever you'd like. Create a new solid. All right, good. Put that in the background, and what we'll do is we'll just put on this a drop shadow. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, yeah, 50%. You know, off the beginning, give it a distance of zero, but uh, then we want to go through to where all the animation comes through a rest, which is there. Go back to the, this comp. And at this point, let's have a distance of maybe 25 on that. Call up its keyframes, easy ease them, and then we'll just stretch this handle this way. And I think that's working out pretty well. So good. It just creates a little bit of a better definition of where the white bars are versus where the other bars are and uh, you know just kind of helps the graphics stand out a bit more so hopefully this has been fun and it's taught you a bit about what to do with these pesky vector shapes and how to make cool things transition from one thing into another this has been evan abrams for premiumbeat.com hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and if you want to see more tutorials uh, stop by premiumbeat.com check out the blog there are tips tricks and tutorials in after effects and other applications there and of course stop by premiumbeat.com for all of your music and sound effects needs perhaps some patriotic music Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Tweet at me, at EC Abrams. Check out the stuff I do, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.